Hi, we've got something a little bit different today. So we've got some uh, intelligent lighting from uh, the 90s. So these are um, clay packy golden scans. These are the HMI 1200 versions. And these are theatrical and entertainment lighting fixtures. Um, and these are a little side project that I've had going on for a while. Uh, just refurbishing these. Um, have no real use for them, although Camden's birthday party is coming up, so it might be nice to uh, fire these up and uh, fill up his venue with some uh, nice coloured lighting. Um, but these are from the 1990s, and I picked these up uh, probably around two months ago now. So there's in total six, uh, which are in various stages of disassembly and you know uh, general condition. Um, so I've started work on two of these at the moment. Um, the one that's in the background here is the one that I'm currently focusing on um, and I'm probably going to give these a, uh, a spray paint and everything to refurbish them into uh, nice condition. Um, I've already replaced the capacitors on the uh, PCB because the PCB wasn't working and I wasn't actually going to do a video on these but uh, I decided some people might find this interesting so um, you know we'll take a closer look in a moment. Um, the state that I got to at the moment was on the um, mirror head. So the way these work is, um, and I'll show you properly um, shortly, there's a light source and a light path which goes through uh, various, these are called gobos and they project patterns and then we've got a colour wheel and there's an iris and a shutter as well. Uh, and the light comes out the end here um, or at the end of the fixture here into this uh, head which has a, a lens and then some stepper motors um, and there's usually a mirror on here which can move across and um, you know direct the light beam um, in any way that you want um, when you control it via your lighting desk or in this case um, via your PC. Uh, but the problem is that the stepper motor wasn't working so I've started to disassemble it and we'll have a look at that on the bench um, just to see what the fault actually was. So here we have the stepper motor which stopped working and basically what was happening is this is on uh, one of the axes of the mirror and all you're seeing was it kind of vibrating but not actually moving which indicated to me that either one of the phases of the motor wasn't wired up properly or the stepper motor driver had broken. So I had a quick look and metered out the connections and one of the phases was completely open circuit and basically this orange wire here had snapped uh, where it exits um, the motor housing just here, uh, presumably from all the movement it eventually uh, just snapped. So uh, I'm not really going to show the repair of this, basically I'm just going to solder some wires onto here, uh, heat shrink them up and then reassemble the device. But I thought it might be quite interesting um, just to have a look inside the step motor. So basically you can see all of the coils and these are wired in series um, so basically this coil, this coil, this coil and this coil are all connected together and then separately this coil, this coil, this coil and this coil are connected together and basically what happens is you energise uh, one of the phases in one direction and you can see all of these little uh, teeth on the shaft uh, they line up with the uh, currently energised coils and then in the simplest mode, in um, full stepping mode, what happens then is you activate the next coil and it sits between the two sets of teeth. So these teeth are slightly offset and then eventually uh, you turn off this coil so that ju just this one's energised and then the teeth are lined up with here and basically that creates a, a rotating field which causes the stepper motor to rotate. So there's a few uh, spring washers and everything here um, just to make sure everything sits tightly but that really is all there is to a step motor and you can see why they have really long life usually uh, because there's only really the bearings to go wrong. Um, obviously in a situation like this where the whole step motor is on a yoke that's moving uh, you have to worry about the longevity of the, uh, the wires that are connecting to the motor but considering this uh, lighting fixture is about 15 maybe 20 years old it's not surprising that uh, at some point uh, one of these wires has snapped. So I'll reassemble all of this back together and we'll go and have a look at the uh, light fixture. Hopefully it'll be working. Right, so I apologise for the lighting. This is the best I can do in this room. Uh, but basically we, what we've got is the, um, the back panel. So on the back panel we've got the uh, digital interfaces and the analogue 0 to 10 volts and the address setting. So this normally sits at the back here. We've got the main PCB which is basically just a series of stepper motor drivers and a microcontroller for um, either reading in the analog inputs or interfacing with the digital interface. 
Uh, we've got a couple of uh, really large ballasts here. So we've got the 1200 watt metal halide lamp just here. Um, and basically all of this is just associated with driving that light. So we've got two, uh, I think they're 575 watt ballasts. Uh, we've got some power factor correction capacitors here. And then we've got the lamp igniter. Uh, there's also a little transformer at the back here. It's either a 20 or 24 volt um, output transformer for driving this board and the stepper motors. And then we'll just zoom in a little bit closer on the optical path. Right, so here we've got the 1200 watt metal halide lamp. Uh, this is a long arc tube, uh, but basically all of the light erupts from the little ball in the center here. And then we've got a parabolic reflector and a couple of lenses, which basically make a coherent beam through the optical path here. And then we've got a couple of wheels here. So we've got a wheel controlled by the step motor here. And this has three gobos and an open position. And the gobos basically uh, project patterns onto uh, um, whatever you're projecting onto. And then we've got a shutter. So we've got a stepper motor just here, um, which uh, can come in and out of the light beam to quickly turn on and off the uh, light source, basically, because the metal halide lamp burns all the time. Um, obviously, you can't uh, easily dim these, or you certainly couldn't back in uh, the days when this was um, manufactured. So basically, there's a, a little uh, shutter here, which gets in the way of the optical path. Um, to um, either produce a strobe effect or just turn off the light source. Um, also in here we've got a, an iris, so this step motor at the back here uh, controls an iris to change the, uh, uh, the diameter of the beam. And then finally we've got another colour wheel here um, which has a series of dichroic filters and again an open position for pure white. Um, I think that's about all there is in here. Um, and then basically in the head there's just another lens which then allows the uh, light to be focused out um, onto the reflector and then out into the room. So these lights are really quite old, they're either from the late 80s or early 90s and at the time the standard way to control theatrical lighting was through an analogue interface so the lighting desks had uh, a whole bank of uh, 0 to 10 volt analog outputs which were then either interfaced with these intelligent lights or with uh, dimmer packs for controlling standard incandescent lights. Now obviously there's not really much gear these days that uses uh, analog to control the lights and the standard is DMX512. So any of you who watch Mike's videos will often see that he designs his uh, lighting fixtures to run from a DMX protocol because it really is quite a robust uh, protocol so it's just a differential pair um, running at 250 kiloboard, and it basically just sends out 512 bytes of data um, and basically you can either control 512 lighting fixtures uh, just to control the brightness of those or in the case of intelligent lighting um, you assign a bank of addresses to a lighting fixture so in this case there's six functions so you've got pan, tilt, colour, gobo, shutter and iris um, so you assign a bank of them to that. It uses up, for example, in this case, six addresses, and it listens for those um, six addresses that it's looking for, and then uh, using the value that's sent, um, you know, changes the colour or um, sets the position of the mirror according to that value. However, when these lights were designed back in the uh, early 90s or late 80s, uh, there wasn't really a standard protocol. DMX is a little bit newer than that. Um, and the people that design the electronics for Clay Packy are an English company called Pulsar, uh, Pulsar Light of Cambridge, and they happened to design lighting desks and they'd come up with their own command-based protocol uh, called the PMX interface, and there's not really any gear these days that uses that interface. I think it was really all their own lighting desks, such as the, uh, the Pulsar Masterpiece. Um, so what I've done is I've designed a little box here which um, converts the DMX interface into a PMX interface for controlling these lights. And it obviously passes through the uh, DMX so that you control normal DMX lighting fixtures. So this has just got a, a chip kit DP32 development board. And this just happened to have a little bit of prototyping space. So I've got a MAX233 there for creating the voltage levels for the PMX interface because it's basically just a single-ended RS232 interface. And then I've got a MAX485 uh, uh, transceiver for receiving the uh, DMX differential pair and giving it to a, um, the UART pin, so a single-ended input on the PIC32. So, um, yeah, basically I just cut some acrylic and put some XLR connectors in here, um, and then everything's really running in the code. There's not really uh, much to it. 
there are some devices on the market um, for DMX to PMX, but they uh, they're costing around five or six hundred pound. This probably cost me about uh, twenty pounds at the most, and uh, well, about two hours worth of time for programming. So uh, we can use this to control these lights from um, the PC. And to control the lights from the PC, I made up this lead. So this is just a, um, a USB RS422 um, to logic level um, converter. Um, I didn't have a RS485 one, so I'm basically just using this in RS485 mode. And then it's just to this uh, XLR connector. I've also um, bought this um, other dev board called a BitWizard, which plugs on top of a Raspberry Pi. And this correctly creates the DMX protocol. So the issue with this, is basically it's relying on your PC to send out the 512 bytes of data with the correct timing, and it basically just uses the CPU and Windows, obviously, to create the timing. So it's possible that uh, it doesn't quite meet the specs, although this lead seems to do OK. Uh, whereas this one, you plug into the USB here, it picks it up as a, a DMX interface, and then uh, the Raspberry Pi itself creates the timing for the DMX, which is uh, obviously a lot more controlled. So we'll try this on the uh, on the lights and have a look what they look like. Right, so I've taken the light unit out of the case um, so that we can see what's going on. Um, so I've disconnected the power supply for the lamp. So all that should be working is the circuit board and all of the stepper motors. So let's turn it on and see what happens. So when it first turns on, it does a uh, homing routine. So basically, uh, there's no real sensors or anything going on in here, so there's end stops um, to limit the movement on all of these devices. So you saw it uh, reaching the end stop and then tapping it to check that it's all the way there. And then basically from then on it just uses dead reckoning of the step motor pulses to um, estimate uh, you know, the position of the wheels basically and the, uh, the mirror over there. You also may have seen that the mirror seemed to be homing correctly. So I've got this connected up to my laptop using Qlight Controller Plus. Uh, so we should now be able to uh, control some movement. So uh, this should be the mirror pan and tilt. So we should have pan here. So that's working properly. And we should have tilt. And then uh, we can control things like the shutter. So uh, at the moment it's fully closed but um, you can make it like a strobe light effect. You can make it faster or fully open. And then we've got the iris, which is by default closed. It's a little bit noisy, um, but yeah, you can open and close that. Um, you can select the colors. So if we want to select green, we can move to the green position, and then obviously uh, to white, um, and we can also select gobos, so we can select uh, the open position, or for example the second gobo. So that all seems to be working uh, correctly. So what I'm going to do is uh, assemble this all back into the case and then we'll fire it up with the lamp ignited and see what happens. Right, so I've connected up the PMX interface at the bottom of the frame here um, into the DMX to PMX converter and I've also got the bit wizard connected to my laptop. Um, so the final thing to do is power this thing up, so hopefully the lamp won't explode. Um, so let's fire this up and see what happens. Oh, that looks promising. Yeah, so I think we can see uh, some light coming from the metal halo lamp inside. 
So I'll just let this warm up and then we'll come back to it in a moment. Right, so we've got the lamp warmed up and I've also got the haze machine. It's really quite warm in here even after uh, about five or ten minutes. Um, that lamp is kicking out quite a lot of heat. I think it's drawing about 1,400 watts from the mains. Um, so we should be able to open the iris and uh, have a look how bright this thing is. And there we go, that's actually, uh, it's actually incredibly bright. The camera's not really uh, picking it up. But uh, yeah, let's have a look how bright it is on white. And yeah, it's, uh, that's really quite bright. We should be able to uh, get rid of any gobos, yeah. Um, and we should be able to move it around. So that all looks like it's working properly. And up and down. So I think the first time I saw one of these uh, clay packy golden scans was uh, probably in my final year at school when I used to uh, do stage productions. Um, we never really had the budget for anything like intelligent lighting, but on that final year uh, that I was at school, we hired some intelligent lights. And uh, this is one of the ones that we hired, so it's kind of got a little bit of uh, nostalgic value for me. Uh, but I remember thinking how incredibly bright it was, particularly on uh, kind of the yellow is extremely bright, although the camera doesn't pick that up quite as well. Um, but when I saw these on eBay, I thought I'd pick them up and uh, refurbish them and uh, see if I can uh, put them to any use. So that all seems to be working quite nicely. I'm hoping to get four of these working out of the six that are in various states of disassembly. Uh, but I wasn't really going to do a video on these, but uh, I thought some of you might be interested in what I was up to. Um, potentially uh, it might be interesting for you to see what's inside one of these light fixtures. So um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I have got some proper electronics videos coming up soon. Uh, so don't forget to uh, stay subscribed if you already are, or subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, leave any comments down below or any questions. And thanks for watching.